I hope everybody's ready to get angry today because that's what's going to happen. Take a look at this story from Politico. Tillerson, U.S. will maintain a military presence in Syria. This is an official announcement of we're going to stay in Syria indefinitely. We're just going to stay there. A country that didn't attack us. Yeah, we're just going to invade it and occupy it and never leave. This is why I get frustrated. And this is why I'm really tough on the so-called resistance. Because they love resisting when it's Trump's vulgar language. They love resisting when it's on the surface. Ah, oh, Russia, 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 Russia. So whenever it's not policy related, right, yeah, let me, let's just resist, resist, resist. Look at my fucking pink hat or whatever the fuck. But when it's actual policy, crickets, Bitch. Crickets, bitch. That's what I hear right now. So here's an, here's an opportunity where the mainstream media can go wall-to-wall anti-Trump coverage, and they would be right to go wall-to-wall anti-Trump coverage. Oh my God, look at what he's doing. Uh, invasion, occupation of a country that didn't attack us. Do the American people want this? No, the American people don't fucking want this. Look at the polls. They don't want this. You could resist wall to wall on the mainstream media. The Democratic Party, every elected Democrat in the country can be out there saying, what are we doing? What are we doing? They didn't even vote on this war. There wasn't even a vote. That's, that's against the Constitution. That's a violation of the Constitution. You have to vote on a war. Congress approves war, but no. The administration says, oh, we'll just go in there and we'll pretend like this is all linked to fucking 9-11. 9-11, invading Syria in goddamn uh, 2016, 2017, 2018 is linked to 9-11 in 2001 when Al-Qaeda barely exists anymore. There are jihadists, sure, but are the jihadists the ones... Uh, the ones in Syria, are they the ones who attacked the United States on 9-11? No. Are we even fighting them in Syria? No. They're the ones we're de facto aligned with in Syria, because those are the rebels who are fighting back against Assad, the Syrian government. Democrats are fucking mums the word. Nobody's saying anything. The strong- Resist! What we do is resist! We're so strong! We're the opposition! But then, when this happens, nobody says anything, and then they wonder why you're not super excited to go vote for them. Maybe because you're not offering us anything. You're not doing anything the American people want. Democrats voted with Republicans to deregulate Wall Street again. That just recently happened. Now we have this situation. And by the way, even when they actually do oppose Trump, they have no backbone. They have no spine. They already folded once on DACA. They already folded once on it. And that's an area where they actually disagree with them. Yeah, we're in favor of the dreamers. They're not in favor of the dreamers. Okay, right, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Sorry, we already folded once around Christmas. Are we going to fight now? Maybe. I don't know. It depends on the mood we're in. We'll see. Well, here's an area. Do you have any idea? You could win an election on this issue alone. You know how easy it is? These guys want endless war. Play the clips of Donald Trump. What are we doing in the Middle East? This is what he used to say. What are we doing in the Middle East? We're wasting all of our money there. Our infrastructure gets a grade of D+. Plus. Let's rebuild our infrastructure with the money we're wasting overseas. Why are we wasting this money? It's so stupid. It makes no sense. Meanwhile, our soldiers are also dying in these conflicts overseas. Countless civilians are dying overseas, which makes people hate America even more and radicalizes more people. What are we doing? Bring the troops home. Bring the troops home. Play clips of him saying that. Show the polls of the American people. Only 17% of Americans still want to be in Afghanistan. We're still there.
And that was as of 2013. I bet that number's even lower now. It's probably 10% of Americans who want to be in Afghanistan. Talk about the $7 trillion wasted in Iraq. $2 trillion wasted in Afghanistan. Why are we... Why are you not talking about this stuff? Why are you not saying, we are 100% against this, indefinitely saying in Syria? Are you kidding me? Because they're just not. They're not against it. They're not against it. And it's not like Obama's hands were clean on this front. He went into Syria too. He was doing drone strikes too. He was bombing seven countries. Trump escalated it to eight countries. He threw, uh, he threw Niger in the mix. Let me give you some of what's uh, said here. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson on Wednesday indicated that America will maintain an indefinite military presence in Syria to fight terrorist groups. We'll get to that in a second. Stand up to Iran's growing influence and pave the way for an end to the regime of Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad. All right, let's pause. What they just said there makes no sense. So what they're saying is we're going to stay in Syria to uh, be against everybody. That's what they just said. Because how are you going to go against Iran and Assad, but also against terrorist groups? I got news for you. It's Iran and Assad who are fighting the terrorist groups. You don't know that? But they do know that. They're just trying to pull the wool over your eyes because they think you're an ignorant American who's not going to look into this shit. Listen, I don't care what the fuck you think about Iran or Assad. You don't have to like them. You shouldn't like them. I don't like them. But the fact of the matter remains, they are the ones who are fighting the jihadists on the ground in Syria. That's a fact. All the stories we recently covered about how ISIS genuinely is on the brink of defeat and they're running scared in the desert. Why do you think that is? It's because of the Syrian army, and it's because of the Kurds, and it's because of uh, the Shia militias and Iran. It's because of the Iraqi army. It's because of the people on the ground there fighting them. Not because of us. I know Trump likes to take credit for it. It's not because of us. So, how are you going to fight the people who are the terrorists, but also the people who are fighting the terrorists, and act like these aren't contradictory goals? Those are 100% contradictory goals. So that doesn't, what they said already doesn't make sense. We're going to stay there to fight the terrorists, but also to get Assad out of power and also to fight Iran. So we're going to stay there and fight everybody. That's what you're saying you're going to do. Do you have any idea how moronic that sounds to anybody who knows anything about the region? More. Tillerson's remarks were the clearest enunciation yet by a Trump administration official of U.S. plans in Syria. They were especially striking in their open-ended commitment given, the president, uh, given that President Donald Trump campaigned on a desire to extricate the U.S. from messy wars in the Muslim world. Tillerson, speaking in California at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, said the Trump administration won't repeat the error former President Barack Obama made in withdrawing U.S. troops from Iraq only to have to send them back later to help fight the Islamic State terrorist network. Look at the fucking framing there. We're not going to make the same mistake as Obama of pulling the troops out. They're not saying, oh, we're not going to make the same mistake as Bush of going in there. What? That's what you should be saying. We're not going to make... Obama's mistake was taking people out. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was Bush's mistake for sending anybody in in the first place. Now you could say, hey, well, why are, you know, if while we're there, what are we supposed to do now, now that we're there? Get the fuck out. And guess what? Let's say you pull out of everywhere in the Middle East and everything goes to shit. So? So? You want to help people? Help people. Send some humanitarian aid to people who are not jihadists. I'm fine with that. I'm sure you're fine with that. If the choices are, send people humanitarian aid... Or fucking stay there indefinitely, militarily, and occupy them, wasting trillions of dollars, and our lives, and the lives of civilians on the other side. Which one is a better choice? But no, they act like, oh, well, we have no choice. Obama's mistake was pulling out. We have no choice, we have to stay there forever. Stop trying to pretend like we have no choice. We obviously have a choice. We clearly have a choice. I just told you, we wasted seven trillion in Iraq, wasted two trillion in Afghanistan. We're bombing eight different countries right now. Uh, drone strikes increased 432% under Donald Trump. The military budget is, what, over $700 billion? Did you know we could fund free college in the United States? Not with the military budget, 
with just the increase in the military budget from this year. There was a $100 billion increase in military spending this year. Bernie Sanders' free college bill cost about $80 billion. So when they tell you, they always tell you this, oh, we can't afford free college, Medicare, we can't afford it, we can't afford it, we can't afford it, we can't afford it, I don't know what you, we can't afford it. But endless war. They don't even fucking blink. Yeah, sure, blank fucking check. I don't care that it's not helping anything. I don't care that these are illegal wars of aggression. I don't care that the American people don't want this at all in a fucking democracy. I don't care. Well, then stop pretending like you're a representative government. You're not. You're not a constitutional republic. You're not a representative democracy. You're not. You're a goddamn oligarchy and plutocracy. You're representing the rich. You're representing the corporations. You're representing the military industrial complex. A lot of people are making a lot of money from these endless wars. But also a lot of innocent people are dying. Where the fuck are you? Media, where are you? I know, you're too busy still talking about the shithole countries remark. So you're, you're too busy uh, doing fake resistance uh, to do actual resistance on policy issues. You... What is it going to take? What is it going to take? We're already permanently in Iraq. We're permanently in Afghanistan. For those of you who don't know, we have 900 military bases all around the world that cost $100 billion a year to maintain. What are we... Are we just going to endlessly throw money at this shit while we have 45,000 people that die here at home because they don't have access to basic health care? Tens of millions of people who have no health insurance whatsoever. We're just gonna sit around and let this happen. Half the country makes $30,000 a year or less. We're just gonna, hey, all that's fine, don't care. Don't care, wages have been stagnant since the 1980s. The minimum wage is not a living wage, so we have millions of working poor people. I don't care about any of that, just keep throwing tax money overseas, killing innocent people, Creating more terrorists. All of this is illegal under international law. What we're talking about here is a terrorist government, the United States. Imagine, imagine if the facts of this were reversed and it was Iran bombing eight different countries, invading them illegally and permanently occupying them. What would we say? Imagine it was fucking North Korea. Oh, we saw the North Korea. Oh my God, threat, North Korea, the North Korean threat, North Korean threat, North Korean threat. Is North Korea bombing eight different countries, invading and occupying three of them indefinitely? Is that what they're doing? Do they have 900 military bases around the world at a cost of $100 billion a year? That's us! We're doing that! And you don't get a goddamn peep from the so-called left-wing party. Not a word! Not a word from them! And don't and then, God damn it, if any- if I hear ANYBODY try to browbeat somebody on the left, WHY AREN'T YOU VOTING FOR DEMOCRATS UNLESS YOU'RE EVIL- I don't wanna hear it! I don't wanna hear it! All the energy that you've spent berating the left, how about you take that energy and berate the corporate Democrats for going right along with Donald Trump! Right along with him, not even a question! It's not a question! Yes, yeah, sure, policy, we're with you! We want you to be able to spy on everybody, NSA spying. We just voted to give you warrantless spying power. Ten Democrats did that. About the same number of Democrats voted to deregulate Wall Street. So you vote with them on Wall Street, you vote with them on NSA spying, you vote with them on foreign policy, and then you're like, gosh, I can't, uh, why can't, aren't we winning? I wonder fucking why. I wonder why. Because with you, your slimy little weasels, who try to pretend like you're on the side of the people, and then you don't vote with the people. At least in recent times, Trump's out there like, yeah, I'm a fucking asshole. Sh uh. I've had enough of this, man. I've had enough of this. N the media fucking sound asleep. Sound asleep. Nothing to say about this. Nothing to say about the NSA spying either. The Democrats sound asleep because they're, they're right along with them. We're not having... We're having a fake debate in the country. This is all kabuki theater. The Democrats will, oh, what coarse language Donald Trump uses. And Donald Trump will get out there and say, ah, shithole countries, ah. 
And then all day long, the fucking media, ooh, language, language rhetoric. Let's talk about the surface level semantics, literally, bullshit. I don't care about some, I care about policies. And on policies, you guys are continuing this rotten, disgusting empire. And we can't sit back and let that happen anymore. The U.S. has backed the rebels in Syria. The rebels are unquestionably aligned with jihadists. They are jihadists, many of them. In fact, there was a study that found over 60% of the rebels are jihadists. 60%. There's been stories of U.S. weapons given to rebels. Those rebels immediately hand them over to uh, Al-Qaeda. There's been stories of literally U.S.-backed rebels beheading children. There's also been stories of Pentagon-backed fighters in Syria um, fighting CIA-backed fighters. So, we're arming both sides in a conflict, even, along with supporting unsavory extremist characters. So, understand that this has nothing to do with protecting you. Nothing at all. What this has to do with is U.S. power. U.S. domination. Hegemony. That's what this has to do with. It has to do with the United States maintaining control of what's viewed as a vital region of the world. And we look at the world as a global chessboard, and we want to dominate that. We want to keep Russia in check. We want to have our allies dominate uh, the Middle East. We've aligned with Saudi and Israel, and we want to have total control of the region for natural resources purposes. So, just understand what this is about. They're going to pretend like it's about protecting you uh, from terrorists. If they were so concerned about protecting you from terrorists, why did they arm them in Syria? If they're so concerned about protecting you from terrorists, why did they give Saudi Arabia over a $100 billion weapons deal recently? Saudi Arabia is the home of Salafism, Wahhabism, the extremist ideology that the terrorists have. They've been, in fact, Saudi Arabia has been arming terrorists, jihadists on the ground in Yemen. They've also been bombing women and children in Yemen. So, we're aligned with them as they, as the government tells you, no, we, we need to keep doing all these wars and illegal occupations because we're fighting them. It's the saddest, most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And again, anybody who's well read on this stuff knows immediately that the points the government is making are total bullshit. So it's time to rise up and fight back against it and not allow the government to do this anymore because we can't take it anymore. We don't have the money to do all this bullshit around the world. We got to stop massacring innocent civilians. We have to stop backing terrorists. If we just stopped arming everybody in the Middle East and elsewhere, terrorism in the world would be cut in half in a year. We f give the arms to everybody who ends up fighting. How about we don't do that? That was Jill Stein's idea. People love to shit on Jill Stein, but Jill Stein had a brilliant idea when everybody's like, you know, they're trying to figure out, oh, what do we do to be terrorism? How, how are we going to be terrorism? And everybody's like, oh, we're going to get involved in this war and that war and this war. And Jill's like, no, here's an idea. How about you stop arming everybody? If you stop arming everybody, they're gonna, not going to have the weapons to fight. If they don't have the weapons to fight, you get a lot more peace around the world now, don't you? So, just know that the government's lying to you. They're lying to you. What they say their purposes are, that's not their purposes. They're not looking out for you. In fact, what they're doing is robbing you, taking the funds, and dominating the world while backing terrorists.